All right, let's solve for exchange equilibrium. You're given an exchange economy. There are two agents A and B, two goods, one and two. You're given A is initial endowment, 10 units a good one, and zero units a good two. And you're given A is utility function. You're also given B is initial endowment, zero units a good one, and five units a good two. And you're also given her utility function. You want to solve for competitive equilibrium. That basically means in equilibrium, how much of stuff will A have, how much of stuff will B have, and what will be the prices in the economy. So let's try to write down A's endowment in terms of numbers. I'm going to denote it by WA. So A has 10 units of good one, so that's 10, and zero units of good two, so that's 10, zero. Similarly, B has zero units of good one and five units of good two, that makes it WB is equal to zero, five. Okay, first let's start off by solving it from A's perspective. I have A's utility function over here and A's initial endowment. First step is to write down the budget constraint. On the left hand side of the equation, I have the possible combinations of good one and good two that agent A can afford given his income. And his income is just the value of his initial endowment, which is just 10 units of good one, which are priced at P1 each. So that's 10 into P1 plus zero units of good two priced at P2 each. So that's zero into P2, so the total income is just 10 P1. Now, in an exchange economy, we are always talking about relative prices over here. So I'm going to normalize the prices by dividing both sides of the equation by P1. And since we are dividing our income part as well, so it won't really make a difference. Our budget constraint will go on to represent the same thing. So dividing everything by P1, we get P1 by P1, that's X1A. P2 by P1, that I'm going to represent as just P. So we'll just have one price from now onwards. So that's P into X2A, which is less than or equal to 10 P1 by P1. Just That's just it. All right, now on to step two. In the last video, we found out the condition for competitive equilibrium in an exchange economy where the slopes of the indifference curves were tangential to the slope of the budget line. We'll, for, we'll talk about A for now. The slope of an indifference curve is given by its marginal rate of substitution and the slope of the budget line is just minus P1 by P2 as we found out in the last video. So let's calculate the marginal rate of substitution given our utility function for A. It's just given by negative of margin utility of X1A divided by marginal utility of X2A. So to find out marginal, marginal utility of X1A, all you have to do is take the utility function and partially differentiate it with respect to X1. That will give you X2A. So that's X2A divided by marginal utility of X2A, which is again, you differentiating, partially differentiating the utility function with respect to X1A. Um, sorry, X2A, that will give you X1A. So it's X2A by X1A equal to P1 by P2. I'm canceling out the negative signs that gives you x2a is equal to p1 by p2 into x1a. Again, I'm going to take these p1, p2 by p1 and I'm going to put it as p and then I'm going to substitute the value that I'm getting for x2a in this equation to find out our demand functions in the next step. Okay, now I've substituted the value of x2a that we just got into our budget constraint. It's the same old budget constraint. It now becomes x1a plus p into x1a by p is equal to 10. The P and P will cancel out. 2x1a is equal to 10. That gives us as x1a is equal to 5. We can take this value and plug it into our x2a, which was just x1a divided by P. So that gives us our second demand function, x2a is equal to 5 by P. So now we have our demand functions for agent A. Similarly, we can calculate it for B as well. Same process for B. B is the utility function. B is initial endowment. Write down the budget line. This time you have zero of good one and five of P2. That's why it's zero into P1 plus five into P2. Give you, gives you the same old budget constraint. Substitute P2 by P1 as P. So you have P to X to B less than or equal to five. In step two, this time you're going to equate the slope of the budget line with the marginal rate of substitution for B, that is slope of the indifference curve for agent B. And you'll perform the same calculation and you'll get X2B as P1 by X1B by P2B. Again, we're going to plug this back inside our budget constraint. So our budget constraint now becomes X1B plus P into X1B by P. Again, P and P will cancel out. You can do the calculation, you'll get X1B is equal to 2.5 into P and X2B to be 
equal to 2.5 now all we have to do is calculate the price in our Edgeworth box video we found out that when the market is in equilibrium for a two agent case both the agents between themselves should be consuming all of the goods available in the world so in this case i have again i have a's initial endowment over here b's initial endowment over here so the total a had 10 units of good one and b had zero units of good one so the total number of good one units of good one available in our world is just equal to 10 similarly we can calculate good two as well a initially had zero units of good one good two and b had five units of good two so that's just five units of good two available in our world that's our total when we were calculating the demand function for agent a and b we found it out for good one and good two so we found out x1a x2a and then we found out x1b and x2b so now we have a condition for equilibrium that is our good one should be equal to 10 and our good two should be equal to 5 let's just take let's just go ahead with good one and that should give us a price so the agent's a's demand for good one that's just x1a agent a's b's demand for good one that's just x1b both of them should add up to 10 which is our total number of units of good one available in our world x1a we found out turned out to be 5 x1b turned out to be 2.5p which will equate it to 10 that will give us our price ratio p is equal to 2 now we can plug this back inside our original demand functions so we'll get x1a as 5 x2a as 2.5 x1b as 5 and x2b as 2.5 you can show your solution by giving a's demand b's demand and ensure that you have your price as well one way to check if your solution is correct is to quickly add up the demand for both of the goods and see if they are equal to the total number of goods available in the world so for good one we had total number of goods to be equal to 10 so a has 5 b has 5 that's equal to 10 so that's right for good two, we had five units of good two available in our world. A has 2.5, B has 2.5, add, adds up to five. So that's correct as well. All right, hope you got around that. I'll see you in the next one.